Hybrid System Introduction. The Prius Hybrid System achieves both superior power and fuel efficiency through combined use of an electric motor and a gasoline engine. The gasoline engine completely stops when the vehicle is stopped. When setting off, the electric motor drives the vehicle. At slow-medium speeds, or when traveling down a gentle slope, the gasoline engine is completely stopped and the motor is used. During normal driving, a gasoline engine and an electric motor are efficiently used. The hybrid battery is charged as necessary. When accelerating sharply, the gasoline engine is started and the power is added to that of the electric motor. When the vehicle is decelerating and or braking, brake energy is converted to electric energy. In this way, the hybrid system lowers fuel consumption as much as possible by effectively combining the gasoline engine and the electric motor. For details, please refer to the owner's manual. Sounds specific to a hybrid vehicle. After the hybrid system starts, it sometimes produces sounds specific to a hybrid vehicle, but this is not abnormal. When the vehicle starts, there is an audible from the back of the vehicle. When the vehicle is stopped, there is an audible sound. This is the operating sound of the high voltage relay. When the vehicle is setting off, there is an audible from the engine compartment. This is the sound of the motor in operation. When decelerating, there is an audible from the engine room. This is the sound of the motor powering the regenerative brake. For details, please refer to the owner's manual. Hybrid System Precautions The hybrid system includes a hybrid battery, power control unit, orange-colored high-voltage cables, and an electric motor. The high-voltage components reach a maximum of 650 volts. Be careful not to touch any of these areas. Also, do not touch the areas such as the radiator as they may be hot and may cause burns. There is an intake vent on the side of the rear seat back for the purpose of cooling the hybrid battery. If the vent becomes blocked, the hybrid battery's cooling efficiency may worsen, leading to a reduction in hybrid battery output, so please exercise caution. The emergency shutoff system blocks off the high-voltage current when a certain level of impact is detected. If the hybrid system automatically shuts off, contact your Toyota dealer to restart the system. For details, please refer to the owner's manual. Smart Key System The Smart Key System has a convenient function whereby the door can be locked and unlocked and the hybrid system can be started simply by carrying the electronic key on your person. The system operates through the transmission of radio waves between the electronic key and the vehicle. When locking or unlocking the doors, the system can be operated when the key is within about 2.3 feet 
from each of the door handles as shown. When starting the hybrid system, the system can be operated when the electronic key is inside the vehicle. Now, let's open the door. Carry the electronic key in a place such as your pocket so that the electronic key can communicate with the vehicle. If you touch the sensor on the back of the door handle by gripping the door handle, a buzzer will sound twice, the emergency flashes will flash twice, and then the door will open. The door cannot be unlocked for three seconds after the door is locked. To lock the door when exiting the vehicle, keep the electronic key on your person, for example in your pocket. When the top side lock sensor area of the door handle is touched, a buzzer will sound. The emergency flashes will flash once to indicate that the doors have been locked. If the door will not lock even when the top side sensor area is touched, try touching both the top side and underside sensor areas at the same time. When using the smart key system, please observe the following precautions. For details, please refer to the owner's manual. Next, let's sit in the driver's seat and start up the hybrid system. While carrying the electronic key on your person, for example in your pocket, check that the parking brake is set. Firmly depress the brake pedal. And check that the power switch indicator, located on the front panel, is green. With the vehicle in this condition, press the power switch. The hybrid system has started properly if the ready indicator comes on with a beep sound. Keep the brake pedal depressed until the hybrid system has completely started up. When the ready indicator is on, the vehicle can be driven even if the gasoline engine is off. When starting the hybrid system, please observe the following precautions. When stopping the hybrid system, make sure that you bring the vehicle to a complete stop, then set the parking brake and press the power switch. In the Prius, if the hybrid system is stopped, the shift position will automatically be set to P. Release the brake pedal gradually. If the indicator on the power switch is off, the hybrid system has been stopped. When stopping the hybrid system, please observe the following precautions. For details, please refer to the owner's manual. Operating the shift lever. Operate the shift lever and P position switch according to the driving conditions. The selected shift position is displayed on the shift position indicator in the instrument cluster. P is used when parking the vehicle or starting the hybrid system. D is used for normal driving. B is selected when driving up hills or down steep hills when it is necessary to use strong engine braking. N is neutral. R is used for reversing the vehicle. Now, let's try moving the shift lever. The shift lever always returns to this original position after shifting operation. 
To shift to shift position D, depress the brake pedal and move the shift lever to the left and down. The shift lever always returns to this original position after the shifting operation. Shift position B can only be shifted to from the D position. Move the shift lever down from the original position. To shift to shift position N, shift the shift lever to the left and keep it there for a short while. To shift to shift position R, first depress the brake pedal, and once the vehicle has been completely stopped, move the shift lever to the left and up. The R will begin to flash, a buzzer will sound, and after checking the shift lever is in R, release the brake pedal gradually. To shift to shift position P, completely stop the vehicle, depress the brake pedal, and push the P position switch. The indicator on the switch will come on. When changing from P to other shift positions, firmly depress the brake pedal, then operate the shift lever, and after checking the shift position, release the brake pedal gradually. If the shift lever is operated without depressing the brake pedal, an interior alarm will sound as the shift position cannot be changed. When operating the shift lever, please observe the following precautions. For details, please refer to the owner's manual. Headlight switch. Use light switches to turn on the headlights and other lights. If the switch is set to off, all of the lights are switched off. When the switch is rotated one notch as shown, the side marker, parking, tail, license plate and instrument panel lights turn on. When the switch is rotated one notch as shown, the next action turns on the headlights. With the headlights on, push the lever forward to turn on the high beams. Pull the lever back to the center position to turn the high beams off. Pull the lever towards you to turn on the high beams. Release the lever to turn them off. You can flash the high beams with the headlights on or off. When the headlights are on and the power switch has been switched to accessory mode or off after a door is opened and closed, the automatic light off system engages and the headlights and taillights automatically turn off after 30 seconds. When only the taillights are on, the taillights turn off automatically if the driver's door is opened. To turn the lights on again, turn the power switch to on mode, or turn the light switch off once and then back to on. For details, please refer to the owner's manual. Windshield Wiper Switch Use the windshield wipers switch to operate the front and rear windshield wipers. To operate the front windshield wiper, use the windshield wiper switch. When the lever is moved to the original position, off, the windshield wipers stop moving. Lowering the lever by one notch causes the windshield wipers to operate intermittently. At this time, the switch can be rotated to increase or decrease the frequency of the intermittent wiper operation.
Lowering the lever one more time decreases the windshield wiper speed. Lowering the lever again by another notch increases the windshield wiper speed. While lifting the lever when it is in the off position, the wipers move temporarily at a low speed. If the lever is released, it will return to the off position and the wipers stop. The windshield wiper fluid sprays while the lever is being pulled. After the washer fluid is sprayed, the windshield wipers operate automatically several times. If the lever is released, it will return to the off position and the spring stops. To operate the rear windshield wipers, use the switch on the tip of the lever. When the switch is in the off position, as shown, the rear windshield wiper stops. Rotating the switch up causes the rear windshield wipers to operate intermittently. Rotating the switch up one more notch causes the rear windshield wipers to operate normally. Rotating the switch up one more notch causes washer fluid to be sprayed out. Washer fluid also sprays out while rotating the switch down from the off position. For information about important precautions, please refer to the owner's manual. The Hybrid System Indicator Environmentally friendly driving assistance, specific to a hybrid vehicle, is provided by utilizing the Hybrid System Indicator displayed in the instrument cluster. The Hybrid System Indicator can be displayed by repeatedly pressing the DISP switch on the steering wheel until it is displayed. The hybrid system indicator is divided into three areas, the charge area, echo area, and power area. Within the echo area, there is also a hybrid echo area. The status of the indicator bar changes depending on the driving conditions. When driving in an environmentally friendly manner, where carbon dioxide emission is low, the echo driving indicator light will come on. Let's now look at some different environmentally friendly and fuel efficient driving procedures whilst observing the hybrid system indicator. When setting off, depress the accelerator pedal slowly. The bar is in the echo area. The echo driving indicator comes on, and the vehicle can be driven in an environmentally friendly way that uses the gasoline engine as little as possible. If the accelerator pedal is depressed quickly, the engine will start and the amount of gasoline consumed will increase. When accelerating, depress the accelerator when the bar is in the middle of the echo area. The acceleration level is controlled and fuel-efficient driving can be achieved. After accelerating, return the accelerator pedal. Then gradually depress it and drive so that the bar is in the hybrid echo area. For drivers who aim for fuel-efficient driving, if the vehicle is driven so that the bar is in the hybrid echo area, the amount of time that only the electric motor is being used is increased, and fuel-efficient driving can be enjoyed. When decelerating and braking, gradually depress the brake in good time. 
The bar moves to the charge area, and more of the electric energy generated when decelerating can be restored via the regenerative brake. At times that require repeated accelerating and decelerating, such as when in heavy traffic, or when waiting for a long time at traffic lights, fuel consumption worsens. Before departing, check traffic information and avoid heavy traffic as much as possible. In heavy traffic, move forward by releasing the brake slightly and use the accelerator pedal sparingly. Excess gasoline consumption can be prevented. Try keeping the vehicle speed down on motorways and drive at a constant speed. The bar moves to the echo area and it can be confirmed that the vehicle is being driven in an environmentally friendly and fuel efficient manner. Also try releasing the accelerator pedal and gradually depress the brake in good time before toll gates. More of the electric energy generated when decelerating can be restored via the regenerative brake. In addition to this, try to keep the air conditioner set to off when it is not required. Excess gasoline consumption can be prevented. Regarding the heater also, the engine does not automatically shut off until the interior of the vehicle warms up so fuel is consumed. By avoiding use of the heater, fuel consumption can be improved. By utilizing the hybrid system indicator, let's use the accelerator in a way that takes into account being more environmentally friendly and fuel efficient. For details, please refer to the owner's manual. Echo Driving Mode by changing the driving mode to echo driving mode, the vehicle can be switched to an operating state in which fuel efficiency is prioritized. To change to echo driving mode, press the echo mode switch. The echo driving indicator light in the instrument cluster will come on and the echo driving monitor display will switch to the hybrid system indicator display. In echo driving mode, air conditioner operation is controlled and low fuel consumption driving is prioritized. Compared to normal driving, in order to improve fuel efficiency, the behavior of the vehicle may be a little slower and unnecessary gasoline consumption is restrained. In addition, environmentally friendly driving that uses the hybrid system indicator can be easily achieved. By utilizing the echo driving mode, fuel-efficient driving can be enjoyed that prioritizes fuel consumption improvement. For details, please refer to the owner's manual. Solar Ventilation System The solar ventilation system uses energy provided by a solar panel built into the roof to operate a fan, allowing ventilation of the vehicle interior that increases comfort when the vehicle is parked in direct sunlight. To use the solar ventilation system, press the ventilation switch when the power switch is turned to on mode. Then turn the power switch to off and exit the vehicle. Outside air mode will then be selected and the air vents will be put into face mode. After approximately 10 minutes, the ventilation operation will commence. The ventilation operation will be cancelled if the ventilation switch is pressed again, which will turn it to off mode. If the power switch is turned to on mode, ventilation operation will be cancelled. 
The solar ventilation system may not operate due to a lack of power from the solar panel where there is a low amount of sunlight or when part of the solar panel is cast by a shadow. When using the solar ventilation system, please observe the following precautions. For details, please refer to the owner's manual. Remote Air Conditioning System When the vehicle has been parked in direct sunlight, the remote air conditioning system can be operated from outside of the vehicle. In order to turn on the air conditioning and lower the temperature in the vehicle interior before entering the vehicle. Before leaving the vehicle, first check the temperature setting of the air conditioning system. The remote air conditioning system will operate when cooling is necessary in accordance with the temperature settings of the air conditioning system. Make sure that the headlights and wipers are off and leave the vehicle. When you want to use the system, press and hold the remote air conditioning system switch on the electronic key and the remote air conditioning system will operate. For safety purposes, the automatic door lock function will be activated when this system is operating. The remote air conditioning system uses electrical energy stored in the hybrid battery. The system automatically shuts off after, at maximum, three minutes have passed. The amount of time it takes for the system to shut off will depend upon the charge level of the hybrid battery. The remote air conditioning system will stop if a door is opened. The system will also stop if the remote air conditioning system switch is pressed twice. The remote air conditioning system will only operate if all of the conditions shown are met. If any one of the operating conditions is not met while the system is operating, the system will automatically shut off. When operating the remote air conditioning system, Please observe the following precautions. For details, please refer to the owner's manual. Cruise Control Cruise control is a convenient system that maintains a set speed without the use of the accelerator. To set the vehicle speed, first press the on-off button. Accelerate or decelerate to the desired speed and press the lever down. Cruise control can be set when the vehicle speed is more than approximately 25 miles per hour. During cruise control driving, adjust the set speed by pressing the lever up to increase speed and pressing the lever down to decrease speed. Hold the lever until the desired speed setting is obtained. The accelerator can be used to accelerate as well. After acceleration, the set speed resumes. Pull the lever towards you to cancel cruise control. The speed setting is also cancelled when the brakes are applied. If the lever is pushed up, cruise control will resume and the set speed will be returned to. However, cruise control will not return to the set speed if the vehicle speed is less than approximately 25 miles per hour. When using cruise control, please observe the following precautions. For details, 
Please refer to the owner's manual. Dynamic Radar Cruise Control Dynamic Radar Cruise Control is a convenient system that has a vehicle-to-vehicle -vehicle distance control mode in which the vehicle automatically accelerates or decelerates in order to maintain a set following distance from vehicles ahead and a constant speed control mode in which the vehicle drives at a constant speed. Neither mode requires use of the accelerator. To activate the vehicle-to-vehicle -vehicle distance control mode, press the on-off button. Accelerate or decelerate to the desired speed and press the lever down to the set speed. Dynamic radar cruise control can be set when the vehicle speed is more than approximately 30 miles per hour. When there are no vehicles ahead, the vehicle travels at the speed set by the driver. When the vehicle ahead is driving slower than the set speed and the radar sensor detects that its presence is within approximately 400 feet, the vehicle automatically decelerates to maintain the vehicle distance. In the situation shown, a warning tone warns you if the system cannot decelerate sufficiently to prevent your vehicle from closing in on the vehicle ahead. So apply the brakes to ensure an appropriate vehicle-to-vehicle -vehicle distance is maintained. If you would like to change the vehicle-to-vehicle -vehicle following distance, press the vehicle-to-vehicle -vehicle distance switch on the steering wheel. Each press of the switch changes the vehicle-to-vehicle -vehicle distance. The system continues follow-up cruising while adjusting for changes in the speed of the vehicle ahead in order to maintain the vehicle-to-vehicle -vehicle distance set by the driver. When there are no longer vehicles driving slower than the set speed in the lane ahead, the system slowly accelerates until the set vehicle speed is reached and returns to fixed speed cruising. To switch to constant speed control mode, press the on-off button and then push the lever away from you and hold for approximately one second. Be careful, as vehicle-to-vehicle -vehicle distance control mode does not operate in this mode. When using dynamic radar cruise control, please observe the following precautions. For details, please refer to the owner's manual. Lane Keeping Assist When driving on freeways or motor highways that have lane markings, the Lane Keeping Assist system recognizes the lanes using a sensor to assist the driver with staying in the lane. Pressing the LKA switch activates the system. While the LKA is on, the lane line display is shown on the multi-information display. If the system judges that the vehicle may deviate from its lane, it alerts the driver using rapid beeping. If LKA is used in conjunction with dynamic radar cruise control, a lane keeping assist function will be activated to help the driver maintain the vehicle in a central position within the lane. A slight steering torque is applied for a short period of time. When using the LKA system, 
Please observe the following precautions. For details, please refer to the owner's manual. If you have a flat tire. For vehicles with a spare tire, remove the center deck board and the center auxiliary box from the luggage compartment and also take out the tools and spare tire. Chalk the tire on a diagonal from the tire to be changed. Slightly loosen the wheel nuts by approximately one turn. Set the jack until the notch of the jack is in contact with the jack point. Turn the jack and raise the vehicle until the tire is slightly raised off the ground. Remove all the wheel nuts and then remove the tire. After removing any dirt or foreign matter from the wheel contact surface, install the spare tire and loosely tighten each nut. Lower the vehicle. Firmly tighten each nut two or three times in the order shown. Drive carefully and replace the compact spare tire with a standard tire as soon as possible. When using a jack, please observe the following precautions. For details, please refer to the owner's manual.